Praise the Lord and greetings to you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's my honor and privilege to welcome you all in the annual convention for Adonai International Church, Bonn, Germany. And this is the day that the Lord has made. Let's all rejoice and be glad in it. Such a wonderful day that God has given in our lives. Let's all come together with happiness in our lives. And uh, let's praise the name of the Lord. I would like to welcome all the people who are watching from across the globe. And let your lives be blessed through this convention. And just let this convention be a blessing to you, your families, and to many people uh, nearby you. And let's pray that this convention, all the worship service and the messages that you hear today and in the next two days will be a blessing in your life and can transform your life into a very next level. And before we proceed for the convention, I would request Reverend Dr. Werner Siegberg to please pray and open this session. My holy Lord and King, you are the King of all kings and the King of all governments. You are the creator of the visible and invisible. You are the mighty Lord who commands the sun and the stars and the galaxies. You are wor worthy to receive the glory and honor and praise. We praise you because your power is unlimited and your love is unconditional and your grace is inconceivable and your nature is indescribable. We praise you for you have come to us in the weakness of the flesh to redeem us, to save us from our evil ways, from our evil hearts. You have given us through Christ new life a new identity, a new freedom in Jesus. You are our provider. You care for our earthly needs. You feed us, you protect us, you comfort us, you challenge us, and you forgive us our sins every day. You make us happy. You founded your church in all the nations. You are planting your holy word and your truth and your gospel in our hearts, in the hearts of people, in the hearts of, of people who, yeah, who don't live forever on this earth, but you give them eternal life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the cross and the good news. And thank you for all the missionaries who take this gospel into the world, who have given themselves to the lost. We thank you, God, for this convention too, for this meeting, for all the people who come together, for the speakers, for the technicians, for the organizers. We, we thank you for all the opportunities you will give throughout this meeting, throughout this convention. We receive that you will give revival, revival to all the nations, to, to nations, to people you love. Please revive Germany as well. Bless this convention. Inspire the people who's, who will speak, who take part. Fill our hearts with, holy, with the Holy Spirit and your authority and your power and your strength. And open up our hearts for the spiritual needs, for the mental needs, for the physical needs of people. Give us new insights in your holy ways through this convention and bless it throughout. We pray and I'm praying in the holy name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I would like to read from the word of God. Let's uh, from the book of Isaiah chapter 43 words 18 and 19. If you can take your Bibles with me, book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 18 and 19. 
forget the former things do not dwell in the past see i am going i'm doing a new thing now it springs up do you not perceive it i'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland i want to encourage each one of you who are joined today that god is going to do something new in your life in this convention the holy spirit is going to work in ways that would transform your life you might have gone through a lot of struggles in the past years and your families would have gone through a lot of struggles last years but today god is speaking to you that he would do a very new thing in your life you will see the change that you never seen in your life god is going to take you into the next level and god wants to talk to you and change your heart change your life and and here we see that god is going to uh, make a path in the mighty waters and god is going to make a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland when when people say there is no hope there is no no uh, it's a hopeless situation and you don't see a way forward today god is speaking to you god is saying to you that he is going to make a new way in your life and he's going to open new doors in your life let's prepare our hearts let's prepare our minds to worship the lord to in truth and spirit let's also prepare our hearts to listen from the god's word today we have an awesome uh, man of god who will be delivering a wonderful message uh, with a heart of missions so let's prepare our hearts and let's all come to worship the lord with with our worship team and let the name of the lord be glorified amen good morning and praise the lord what a wonderful day that the lord has given to us to worship the lord and to listen from god's word you know psalms number 34 it says i will extol the lord all times i will the his praise will always be on my lips my soul therefore will boast in the lord let the afflicted hear and rejoice it's a great honor for us the adonai disciples of the adonai the national church born germany to extol and lift up his holy name with you all praise the lord hallelujah and we're going to sing some of the familiar songs and kindly join with us by clapping or you know dancing as you wish and worship the lord today morning with truth and spirit I come before you today and there's just one thing that I want to say thank you lord thank you lord for all you have given to me for all the blessing that I cannot see thank you lord thank you lord Oh 
Oroliudan in mana He took my darkness and gave me your love Thank you Lord Thank you Lord You took my sin and my shame You took my sickness and healed all my pain Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched chant, I bless your name. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With a grateful arm, with a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched hand, I'll bless your name. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, the reason why we live today morning is just because of God's grace. I do not know whether you agree with me that there are thousands of people around us are going to death every day. And there are thousands of people are on the street without peace. But today as we worship the Lord, would you be able to say from the bottom of your heart, Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for what you are doing in my life. And therefore, I want to say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And I know he rescued my soul. His blood has covered my sin. And I believe, I believe it's the public you know, proclamation of you are a child of God. Jesus has taken my shame and he has healed my pain. As a chorus, it's so beautiful. My Redeemer lives. Hallelujah. Would you have to repeat after me? My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, to join them. Yeah, don't this is end of me, dog. I know he rescued my soul. His blood has covered my sin. I believe. I believe My shame is taken away My pain is sealed in the same I believe I believe I'll raise the banner Oh, My Lord has conquered the grave My Redeemer lives My Redeemer my Redeemer lives, my Redeemer lives. I know He rescued my soul, yes He did. His blood has covered my sin, I believe, I believe. My shame is taken away, my pain is still in his name. I believe, I believe. I'll raise the banner, oh, my Lord has conquered the grave, my Redeemer lives, my 
மறுடி மல்லி மறுடி மல்லி மறுடி மல்லி யூ லிவ் மை போடேம் ஆல் ரைஸ் வித் யூ அண்ட் ஐ சிங் ஆல் த மவுண்டன் டாப் டு சி யுவர் கிங்டம் காம் மறுடி மல்லி 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 ஹாலலூயா ப்ரைஸ் தி லார்ட் ஹாலலூயா ஹாலலூயா Hallelujah I want to sing the Paul Ames again my redeemer lives glory hallelujah hallelujah oh sing with us my redeemer lives 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 Marudi ma oh yes we believe marudi ma you marudi ma le marudi ma le marudi ma le arsavo marudi ma le marudi ma le hallelujah glory to be the name of jesus hallelujah We worship you Lord this morning because we know of the fact that you are still living for us O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Allah in dus gnade stays here. For thine throne my God by the air. Hallelujah Hallelujah Oh thank you Jesus Hallelujah By grace alone I stand by here Hallelujah The grace which was shown on the cross of Calvary The drops of blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary Hallelujah ஸ்டேஷோ <laughs> the heart in me is to find a sign of life when i smile has a noy for a on sad and flows me its vibe in my minus and the proof must flee the mesh bin sa oh christ and oh christ and have their fumish can un minus ile vishu Do 
do be heli Jesus Der alle schon heilbar Die Liebe in Person ist hier Gerecht und Tröchte zu mir Hallo, Salo, weich niemals ab In so zu ein Wim Gebühr Mutig komm ich, mutig komm ich vor den Das ist der Grund, warum wir feiern. Wir sind befreit durch das Wort. O preisen Herr, preisen Herr, ihr Herr von meinen Schubizern. Und ich komm mit, und ich komm mit. In deinem Namen darf ich sein. In deinem Namen darf ich sein. Halleluja. Thank you, Jesus, for your redeeming love, O Lord. In deinem Namen darf ich sein. O Lord, thank you, Jesus, for holding our hands, O Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. As we worship the Lord, you may be sitting in your apartment and in your room. And as we worship the Lord, would you be able to say loud, how great is my Lord Jesus? Hallelujah, glory, how great is our God. Sing with me, Hagre, is our God, and all will see Hagre, Hagre, is our God. Splendor of King, the splendor of the King, Lord in man. Just see, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in love, and darkness lies to hide, and trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. How great, how great. Saga, sing with me, Hagre. It's Saga, and all we see, Hagre. Hagre, it's Saga. He said, beginning at the end, beginning at the end. The God had three in one. Oh, Father, spirit, son, the lion and the lamb, the lion and the lamb. How great, how great. Saga, sing with me, Hagrid. In Saga, all we see, Hagrid. How 
Today morning, O oh Lord, because we know that your name is above all of the names of the world, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. And we know that every knee shall bow before you, O oh Lord. Glory to be the name of glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, name above all name. You are worthy of. I praise my heart will sing a great is a God. glory Father God thank you Jesus for giving us such an honor to worship in truth and spirit hallelujah and to listen to your songs O Lord and to worship with you Lord hallelujah and thank you jesus for your presence right now here O oh lord and i want to pray for everyone who have joined us today morning to worship with us O oh lord to listen from your word O oh lord speak to our hearts today morning O oh lord thank you jesus In the name of jesus christ we humbly pray amen 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 god bless you Thank you, worship team, for this anointed time of worship that we had. And we could experience the Holy Spirit working during this worship. We thank God for this wonderful time. Now, I would request Pastor Isaac Elzdanam, the senior pastor of Adonai International Church, Bonn, Germany, to come forward and uh, inaugurate this convention. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. The gospel according to Mark chapter 15, 16, verses 15. He, that is Jesus, said to them, Go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. I want to quote that again. Go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. I want to welcome everyone. Um, to the annual convention of the Adonai Adonai Church Bonn, Germany. And we've been longing to have such a, um, a spiritual meeting these two days and starting from today morning. And, um, you know, as we read in Mark chapter 16, verse 15, it's a great commission given by our Lord Jesus Christ saying that, go and preach the gospel. To whom he said, he said to the disciples, the chosen one. And why God had, why Jesus had the concern for the world? To know that, we have to read John chapter 3 verse 16, where it says, For God so loved the world. God loving the world. In God's love, you are there. And me, I'm also there. So every nation's also there in God's love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. And then what is next? He said, whoever believes in him, that is Jesus Christ, shall have eternal life. But before that, there is also one word, shall not perish. 
we see the world is perishing without the name of Jesus. The world is in a, in a destroying uh, period of time that we see that people, thousands of people on this earth are going to death without the name of Jesus. And why we have to know the name of Jesus? It also clearly says that to, to have eternal life. Today, as we begin this convention, the agenda is nothing but to proclaim the love of Jesus to all nations. And we got today also the dear servant of God who will be also sharing from, um, from the mission concerns, you know. Um, pray that the Lord would speak to our hearts today morning and give us the burden to reach many people out with the gospel. Hallelujah. And we have a four section today morning and today evening and then tomorrow morning and evening. And I'm sure that the Lord is going to speak through each and every section. What you have to do is just to listen to God's word today. And I pray that the Lord would bless our convention. Shall we pray together? Father, we want to thank you so much for your great commission that you have granted us, O oh Lord. That we will be a testimony of your love to the neighboring places that we live in. To the community that we are part of. To the nation that we are staying in, O oh Lord. And we know that you have died for us. You have come down to the earth, O oh Lord, to save us, to make us your children, and giving us the eternal life, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, as we begin today the convention, the annual convention of our church at Ona International Church, Bonn, Germany, pray that the Lord, you would speak to everyone's hearts who are watching online, to are attending our service today, Lord. You would energize them through the Holy Spirit as they worship with us. And we pray that the Lord, you would bless us and give us a meaningful sections. We commit these four sections into your mighty hands, O oh Lord. We pray and dedicate our convention in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for listening to your prayers. The mighty name of Jesus Christ, we humbly pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Now, uh, our worship team will come forward and uh, sing a song dedicated to the theme of this convention. So let's prepare our hearts and uh, and listen from listen to this beautiful song. You know, we the Adonai Church in Bond, we believe that these are the days of Elijah. How many of you do you agree that? Say Amen. And we believe that these are the days of Elijah. What would happen? Declaring the truth of the gospel. Declaring the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Sing this beautiful song with us. of Elijah declaring the word of the Lord and these are the days of your servant Moses righteousness being restored and though these are days of great trial of famine and darkness and storm Still we are voice in the desert 
crying, preparing the way of the Lord. Behold, He comes, riding on the cloud, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, lift your voice, it's year of Jubilee, and out of science in salvation come. These are the days of Ezekiel, the dry bones becoming a shred. And these are the days of your servant, David, rebuilding a temple of praise. These are the days of the harvest, the fields are wide in your own. We are the labor, Signor, we nay are declaring the way of the Lord. Behold, He comes, riding on the cloud, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, lift your voice, it's the year of Jubilee. And out of Zion Hill salvation come, behold he come, riding on the cloud, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, lift your voice, it's the year of Jubilee. And out of Zion Hill salvation come. There's no one like Jehovah. There's no God 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 like Jehovah. Behold, He comes riding on the cloud, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, lift your voice, it's year of Jubilee, and down of science in salvation come, behold he come, riding on the cloud, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, lift your voice, it's year of Jubilee, and down of science in salvation come. Thank you, worship team. Now is the time that we have been, we have all been waiting to listen from God's word. Today uh, we have an amazing servant of God who has a heart for missions and has been a missionary and has been teaching in different Bible co colleges regarding mission. With us today, his name is Dr. Dietmar Schulz, and uh, he teaches students in undergraduate, graduate, and postgraduate uh, colleges, theological colleges, and is teaching currently in four Bible schools, uh, BSB, SW, BTS, LU, and TMU, and he's also a team associate of IMB, and he's a very renowned uh, person when it comes to encouraging youths and encouraging people for missions. And he has a very big heart for mission. And today, it's our privilege and honor to have uh, Mr. Schultz with us and encouraging our church as well as encouraging uh, the, all the members who have joined here in Zoom for, for a heart to mission and go out and see what's happening and what is the need for this nation. Let's prepare our hearts. Now I welcome Dr. Dietmar Schulz to present from the Mission Challenge. Yeah, thank you so much for the invitation. And it's a privilege for me to be part of your convention. It is amazing for me to see what is going on in your church. And uh, just to give an example, um, I checked out your Facebook and with your worship services, you got between 3,000 to 5,000 views. And we, when we would compare that to the largest uh, Protestant free church in Bonn, that is uh, five to six times as many. So this is really incredible. 
And uh, so you never know what God is doing through your ministry. And uh, that will be one of the themes I'm going to talk about, that we should not focus on what we see, what we can measure, what we can count. But God is the God of mission and what he's going to do and what he has done already is always amazing and more that we can uh, see or describe. I feel connected with people from India. Um, first, I was a student in Bangalore back in 1991-1992 for five months at the UTC. I took some classes in theology and I traveled in South India. So I know India back then. I'm sure much has changed, but certainly not the landscape, the beauty of the countryside. And uh, so I really feel connected. And later, I uh, wrote my dissertation about Baptists in Northeast India. Uh, some people call it uh, Baptist paradise because uh, more than 60% of the population are Baptist in Nagaland. I'm not sure if this is really a paradise when there are so many Baptists uh, together. But anyway, so um, that was very interesting. And uh, today I will talk with you about uh, mission in Germany. We will talk about first about the, the biblical concept of mission. Then I will talk with you about the situation in Germany uh, today, but also in the past about various attempts. And then uh, talk with you about things we can do together to reach people in Germany and people from the nations coming to uh, Germany to, to live here, to, to work here, to study here. So I've prepared a, a presentation I'm going to share now. And uh, let me just also enable uh, that. Okay, I can share now my audio. All right, mission in Germany is the subject, but we know at least from your church, it's not only about Germany, it's always about the world because uh, you never know how many people and what kind of people are watching your uh, worship services. So I assume that there will be people in India certainly are watching what you're doing and that's amazing. And I really like uh, your worship worship team. That's, that's really impressive. All right, so let's um, move through. So first, uh, I would like to give a limitation of what, I'm, what I can do and what I'm going to do. So I'm convinced there's always um, more going on in mission that anyone can track. So there's, we don't have the ability to really describe and see what is going on in mission. And I would be a fool if I would try to attempt what uh, mission is in Germany and what mission has been in Germany. So therefore my presentation is limited, selective, subjective. But it should be an encouragement for all of us that God is doing mission and he's doing it uh, with us, with our attempts and sometimes despite our attempts, when our uh, attempts to reach people are sometimes more an obstacle to come to God uh, than an invitation. So in the end, God is winning. So you might know this website if not you can check it out later um, and uh, if you're interested i can share uh, the pdf of that presentation it's called witness to all and that is a live tracker of what is going on for one mission organization who is doing internet based mission and they refresh the website every day so that was from yesterday at um 14 hours uh, 50, 46, so quarter to three uh, p.m. And you see that already 110,000 people visited um, gospel presenting websites and 18,000 had already uh, declared on the website that they would like to follow Jesus and 58,000 or almost 59,000 discipleship activities were going on. And that is just one mission organization who is doing internet-based uh, evangelism. So, and you see the countries uh, where the dots are, where people are accessing the internet. So it's really encouraging to, uh, to check out the website uh, from day to day. And there are certainly more at the end of the day. Uh, what for me as a European is sometimes discouraging, there are not so many uh, dots coming up in North, uh, Northern Europe or Central Europe. 
So there's much more interest in, in countries of the so-called 1040 window. Another website, just to where I get information, and I assume that people who are interested in mission uh, get most of their research. It's called Joshua Project. I will come back to that website later. It really helps to see what's going on. But it's also um, a little bit scary to see the, the numbers. So we are talking about more than 7,000 unreached people groups in, in the world, and many of them are in India. So what you are doing here in, uh, in Bonn, Germany, and by broadcasting your worship service uh, is, I think it's incredible. And it could help to reach people in India uh, who can understand English and who might be interested. So you never know how many of those unreached people group can be reached by uh, what you're doing. So that should be an encouragement. So what I'm trying to achieve today is I will briefly tell you about what's happening in mission uh, and the mission field here in Germany from my perspective. What are possibilities for you as a church, for you as individuals? I will begin with uh, my understanding of the Great Commission. And I will also talk about reverse mission. That is the idea that people coming from countries who used to be receiving countries for the mission coming now back as uh, missionaries to Europe and to North America, which is a very interesting um, movement. So a text which is similar to the text Brother Isaac has read to you from um, Mark 16. It's another um, commission. It's called the Great Commission. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I'm with you always to the end of the age. So this is something you can read by yourself. Uh, I, I cannot read it. One is in Hindi and the other is in Malayam. And, uh, please have a look at the Great Commission in the language you might be familiar with. Uh, if you speak other languages, you might have a look at wordproject.org Bibles. So you can read the Bible in many, many languages. Um, it's uh, free on the internet. So this is really amazing. Um, when we look at the Great Commission, it's, it's like um, you have the uh, umbrella of the protection um, with the saying, Jesus Christ speaks, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And uh, if somebody would send you on a difficult and dangerous mission and he cannot protect you, that would be, could be a suicide mission. But if the one who is in control of everything, in control of heaven and earth, and he sends you, then only those things happen to you that has been in, under the control of Jesus Christ. So that is very important. Therefore, he sends us. And what I find interesting, and uh, many Bibles don't really reflect the structure. So the commission itself is to make disciples of all nations. That is the only imperative in the text. So we should make disciples. And then the Greek text describes us how we should make disciples by going, and I will come back later what that means, by baptizing and by teaching. And how long should we do that? Uh, until Jesus comes back. So that's something we need to do until Jesus comes back and he closes, I am with you always to the end of the age. So that is uh, the Great Commission. And how do we make disciples? So what does it mean to make disciples? And there, there are so many different approaches and also very helpful approaches. I would describe making disciples to invite a person in a learning relationship in a lifelong learning relationship to learn more about Jesus Christ. So that's actually a disciple. And the word, which is very interesting, is not often used in the Bible. It's only it appears three times in the entire Bible. In uh, Matthew 13, Matthew 28, and Acts 14. So that means it should be, shouldn't be the main 
description of a Christian to be a disciple, but it's certainly a very uh, appropriate concept to describe that. And the oldest translations of the Bible, the Latin Vulgate, translated to teach instead of to make disciples, the Syrian Peshitta translated to teach or to instruct, and the, the revised Luther Bible from 2017 also has Lehret, which means to teach. So one might wonder, is the commandment to make disciples simply a command to teach people about the gospel? So that is a discussion which is going on among um, people who are interested in mission. And some would say making disciples is certainly more than teaching. And what I would like to um, comment here is that I don't want to give the impression that disciples are better Christians. So sometimes when you read certain books about missions, you feel that a disciple is the real Christians while the other Christians are only nominal Christians. So you have a category of dividing Christianity into groups, the disciples and the Christians. And I think that's something we must not do based on the text. Uh, the word disciple helps us to understand the concept, but it's not a category to uh, to put certain Christians who are better than others into that category. So I would say a disciple is, is a person who is committed, as I mentioned earlier, to a lifelong learning community under the Lordship of Jesus Christ and, and that's very important, with Christians in a local church. And uh, if that is not possible in COVID, if you cannot meet, we can be connected uh, via the internet. So that's okay. So we are still a local church in a way. And if other people join us, that's uh, certainly okay. So to teach gives the basic idea of doing mission. That means to help people understand what the gospel is all about. And there are three steps. We can do that based on the Great Commission. Um, first, we go. And the going is not just going from A to B or going from India to Germany or from Germany to India. It is much more, the word that is used here in the Greek text is more like our walk of life. So mission means when we go is that it is a 24 seven approach, how we live our life as Christians, that we are salt and light according to Matthew 5. And it doesn't, we don't be mission, we, we are not missionaries when we first go from A to B, we are missionaries already wherever we are. We don't have to leave our home to be a missionary. So when you live in Germany, you are a missionary in Germany. When you live in India or in China, or wherever, you are a missionary where you are because of your walk of Christ, uh, with Christ. So I think that's important. And the word is even uh, stronger that is used here in the Greek text. That is, it means to walk until you die. Or even to walk into death. That means the strongest testimony uh, of a Christian is to die for your faith as a martyr. And all disciples except John did that. And we know about persecution in India, that people suffer for their faith and, and many have been killed. And that's, it's, it's a tragic, it's so sad for the families and my heart goes out to all those who are suffer for their faith. But the encouragement we read in, in the Great Commission is that that is the strongest possible testimony for the Christian church. If people are so committed that they believe in Christ, that they would give their life for Christ. So that is all included in the go which is I, I would say that's amazing the second is is the importance of baptizing and that's especially in on the mission field a challenge because the person who got baptized uh, has a public proclamation of his faith and that could lead to a separation from his or her family so people in countries where there's persecution they hesitate to be baptized because that could be a problem but baptism is not only a public uh, proclamation of faith. It is also the place where you receive instruction. 
So when we look at the history of the church, the church made sure that people who got baptized know what they were doing. So they received instructions. So it's another form of teaching. Teach the, the church what the gospel is all about. And the third part is to teach them to keep everything. Uh, I feel that is my, my approach to help people to keep it. A pastor is called to help the church to keep their faith. So what, uh, what the pastors in your church are doing is very important because it's not helpful if you become a Christian and then fall away after a short time. So it's essential to encourage each other to keep our faith. So that's the third time uh, where we have the concept of teaching. So encourage each other to become more like Jesus Christ. That is its, its mission. And uh, when I read the epistles, I see the emphasis on holiness. Holy, I've, no, sorry. Just my neighbor comes up and he wants to have something. <laughs> sorry about it. Okay, uh, when I read the epistle, I see the emphasis on holiness. Holiness is the goal, the outcome of teaching of discipleship. And when we look at the 12 disciples, Judas was a disciple, but he was not a holy man. So that tells us the New Testament later shifts the emphasis on holiness and the word disciple or disciple making does not appear after the book of Acts. The word disciples are only in the four gospels and in the book of Acts. But then with all the letters from Paul, Peter and John, uh, we have uh, the Bible calls Christian saints, for example. And that reflects the idea that mission uh, happens because people are in the process of becoming more like Jesus Christ. People can see the change. Okay, he was that, that way before. Then he became a Christian and something has changed. Why? So how is it possible that a person uh, who was a sinner becomes a saint? And that's a very strong testimony for us. So when we uh, read the beginnings of, of the letters in the Bible, we see that uh, Paul is either writing to the church or to the saints, like in Galatians, to the churches of Galatia, or here in Ephesians, to the saints who are in Ephesus. In uh, Philipp Philippians 1, uh, Timothy writes and, and Paul to all the saints in Christ Jesus. Then Colossians to the saints and faithful brothers in Christ. And I would say that reminds us we cannot make a saint. No church can make a saint, but we can uh, encourage each other and we can teach people what does it mean to be a saint. But a saint is not a product of our own effort. Yeah, that is something which this happens supernaturally. That's something we celebrate this weekend. So the church around the world is celebrating Pentecost. And Pentecost was the birth of the church. And uh, Pentecost did not happen because the church applied the right method or strategy, but because the Holy Spirit was moving and changed people. So that's that's the essence, that's the core of missions. The power of the Holy Spirit is doing something, changing people. And he is using the church to be part of the mission. But sometimes he's reaching out to people even when there is no church present. And I feel from my perspective, as a church, we always have to be careful as Christians to not pretend that we are holy. We should be honest. So it's better to be honest than to play church or to appear to be a good Christian. And especially in honor shame cultures, which are the majority of cultures around the world, there's the temptation to make a good impression. And from the remaining unreached people groups, 90% are people groups in honor shame cultures. So where it is not appropriate and not good and not helpful to admit that you have made a mistake on error. So the concept of sin uh, is, is a challenge in those cultures. And I think since all those who are attending this, co this convention 
and who have become Christians, they you have experienced what does it mean to admit that you are a sinner and that you need Christ, that you re receive forgiveness and that you experience change. And that's something you should communicate with others who do not like to, uh, to admit that they are sinners. So by the way, at the end of my presentation, we have about 10 minutes uh, to talk about uh, some of the slides I'm willing uh, for a Q&A session. So please, uh, if you have questions, write them down and, and uh, ask them later. So uh, to conclude that theological part, a disciple is not the result of the correct method and strategy. So we don't make disciples in the way that we make a product. But we make disciples in participating in the teaching of the gospel and by calling people into a community, uh, a lifelong community of learners. That means we should strive to finding the right uh, way of reaching people. So the very essential part is that we learn the language of the people. So I, I really appreciated that one of your worship songs was in German, which is, I think it's great. You are an international church, you sing in English, um, and you know that people from Germany are attending your church or watching your sermons. So you, you tell those, we would like to communicate with you in your language. And that's amazing. So when I would live uh, long term in India, then I need to speak one of the many languages in India, which would be very hard for me. So I think uh, right now in my age, it's almost impossible to learn a language spoken in India. But I'm always impressed how fast people in India can speak their languages. So it's, it's really impressive. So let's have a brief look about um, mission so far during the last uh, seven decades. I only give one or two examples. And uh, the examples should um, tell you two things. First, there has been many efforts over the past, but there were also some things which could be or which are problematic when we look back. So. Um, let's have a look at one of the probably most impressive example in missions in, hist uh, in the history uh, during the last 70 years. That was Billy Graham in Germany. Billy Graham is considered by, by many as the most influential evangelical of the 20th century. So the person who has reached has preached to uh, more than 200 million people in, uh, I think, more than 185 countries who had um, a remarkable legacy and nobody could accuse him of any misdoings. So he was a role model for many. He united um, various denominations. He himself belonged to the Baptist denomination, but he worked with all kinds of uh, Christians in various denominations. And uh, in his earlier years, he preached in the 1950s in post-war and post-Nazi Germany. And it was impressive because imagine that uh, preaching in Germany and 90,000 Germans would come to your worship service, to your uh, what you're doing, to your evangelism. So he filled an entire stadium, the largest back then, the Berlin Olympia Stadium. Almost 90,000 people came. So now I will show you a brief video. I hope that you are able to hear uh, the sound of the video. So let's see. <laughs> Der bekannte Prediger Billy Graham traf auf seiner Deutschland-Tournee in Berlin ein und fast 90.000 Menschen waren in das Olympiastadion gekommen, um den Evangelisten aus Amerika zu hören. If today you give your heart and your life to Jesus Christ, wenn du heute dein Leben, dein Herz dem Herrn Jesus Christus auslieferst, he can forgive your sins dann kann er deine Sünden vergeben and solve your problem. deine Probleme lösen and lift your burden. seine Lasten heben If you are not sure that you're saved, wenn du nicht gewiss bist, dass du errettet bist and you want Christ, 
Und du möchtest Christus? And you're ready to receive him today as Savior? Und du bist bereit, ihn jetzt, heute als Heiland anzunehmen? Those are the ones I want to stand. Das sind die, die ich bitte aufzustehen. If you mean it with all your heart. Wenn du es von ganzem Herzen tun willst. And you're giving your life to Christ today as Savior. Und du dein Leben Christus ausliefern willst, jetzt und heute dem Heiland ausliefern willst. Then remain standing. Dann bleibe stehen. So, I mean, that is impressive. An entire stadium stands up and would like to receive Christ and follow Christ. So, and so we might be uh, looking back and hope, oh, hopefully that could come back again, such movements. And of course, that could be possible. But on the other hand, we should be also critical when we look back at some of the approaches. And for me, as a German, I would say he made it too easy for the Germans to get rid, rid of the horrible sins Nazi Germany had committed by just standing up from your seat. So imagine what Germany had done. So six million Jews were killed. Uh, Germany has caused World War II, where millions of people died. And now you only have to get up from your seat and said, I follow Jesus. Is that, is that okay? Is that helpful? And how sincere is that? So when we compare that, what happening, what was happening in the 1950s, so 10 years earlier, the ent entire stadium got up to cheer Hitler. And 10 years after that, there were still Germans who not really had the concept of sin they committed in the Third Reich. So when the back then Chancellor Willy Brandt knelt as a gesture of humility and penance towards the victim of the Warsaw Ghetto, uprising many Germans, especially Christians, they did not like that act acknowledging the sins of the past. And I think that's a problem. So when you invite people to follow Christ without really helping to understand them what sin is, it could create a superficial form of Christianity. So there's, if you would like to read more, there's a scholarly article and just show you an, uh, a picture. May 1st, 1939. That were all young people, all young Germans in the stadium, 90,000 young Germans and the black jackets formed uh, the words, wir gehören dir, which means we belong to you. That was the dedication of the Germans to Adolf Hitler. So Adolf Hitler was speaking to them here from uh, that pulpit and the Germans decided we follow you. Five months later, World War II started. The people had dedicated their lives to Hitler. And you see, it's always easy to, to get up and follow the crowd. Uh, if, if many people are doing it, then be part of the crowd and crowds mostly follow a leader. The question is, is, is it a good leader? Is it a leader who leads them in the right direction? Or is a leader leading a people into a destruction? So therefore, I am always cautious when it comes to mass movements. I think it's always more responsible if we build churches not with masses, but in a one-to-one -one discipleship relationship in small groups where people really have the chance to to discover what uh, Christianity means and just briefly and uh, there's uh, a ministry it's called um, it was created by Ray Comfort and he calls it health's best kept secret and he has observed in America in the 1970s and 80s that 80 to 90 percent of those who are making a public confession to Christ in an event like that we have seen, they fall away. So if you if you like, uh, have to be uh, now moving forward quickly. So you might Google health's best kept secret, living waters, Ray Comfort. And the reason because people fall away is they don't know what sin is and why, why it was necessary for Christ to come. So I can only encourage you, if you have the chance to speak with people who are interested in their faith, before they make a decision to follow Christ, help them to understand the U-turn they need to make, the changes that will follow 
what it means uh, the process to being a saint uh, and turning away from being a, a sinner. So Billy Graham has, has learned a lot and they have learned that it's important to work with the local church to prepare such an event and to have a follow up. So I think now they're doing a much better job helping the people to uh, to do that. And they are planning next year in the Land Access Arena with the, the son of Billy Graham. So we have seen many different strategies. Many people have invested in Germany. And um, I would say without people coming from other countries, especially from America and now from the global south, uh, the situation would be much worse. Um, and I would like to thank you all who have invested in Germans, who have tried hard, who have worked on a small scale basis. So we haven't seen the big masses later coming to Christ. Uh, the situation, and I have the, the clock in mind, um, so I won't be able to present everything, but what I will do now is to help you understand what Germany uh, means when it comes to church and Christianity and how difficult it is to do missions here. So Germany is a country where more than 60%, uh, almost 60% say we are members of the church. I think it's 55% who are members of a Christian church. So that means we are a Christian nation, right? <laughs> so if 55% of people are members of the church, that, that should be a good thing, no? So you can look at the various, uh, I don't have to read them to you, various denominations. So the major two churches are Catholic and Protestant, together with almost 50 million uh, church members. So that is uh, some other numbers. So when it comes to those who really um, have a relationship of Christ, according to Joshua Project, only 2%. And some say even less. So you have Christian adherents up to 65%. You have evangelical Christians about 2%. And then you have a problem because you have non-religious Christians in Germany. And that's something I would like to use as a slide for the closing um, presentation. And then we can have Q&A. So I will translate what you see. So you have uh, four groups here who have been surveyed, Catholic Christians, Evangelical Christians, which means Protestants at the Lutheran Church mostly, Orthodox Christians, and Muslims in comparison. So do you believe in a supernatural power? And I will focus now on, now on the Protestant Christians. So that means we have church members who are so-called Christians and only 50% believe in a supernatural power. So do you believe in God? Only 70% of Protestant Christians believe in God. That means you have 30% atheistic Christians in the church. Do you believe in devil or in Satan? Only 16% of Protestant Christians believe in Satan. Do you believe in life after death? Only 42% believe in life after death. Do you believe in rebirth? Only 18% of Protestant Christians. So that means we have created a Christian culture in which people are members of the church without really believing in the essentials. And even if they might believe in God, the question is what kind of understanding of God they have? Who is Jesus Christ to them? And I think that is one of the main challenges to reach Germans who fear they are Christians. But in my perspective, many of them are not. So, and how can we reach them? I would say we can only reach them by, by helping them to understand what the gospel is all about, by helping them to understand what does it mean to be a saint, uh, by helping them to be uh, honest, to say, listen, I would like to be a saint, but I'm a sinner as well. So not everything I do is perfect. I have my mistakes, but I know what I can do with them. I can come to Christ and I receive forgiveness. I know how important it is to be part of the Christian community when other people can tell me, listen, what you are doing is not right. 
And therefore, you can invite your friends and your neighbors to the church. And why are German evangelical church churches not so successful? We just move forward. Uh, because they feel that they have problems to bring their friends to church. That's another survey. So Christians in churches, they don't uh, feel it's easy to bring your friends to a church. Yeah. Okay, maybe just one more slide and then I, there's, there's so much I could tell you. There are 11 frontier unreached people groups in Germany, which are people with less than 0.1% uh, Christians of any kind. Uh, so that are the 11 groups that are in Germany. There are certainly many more unreached or frontier people groups in Germany, uh, in, in India. So that are the faces of people. You should remember if you meet people who are looking similar like that, uh, that are the last reached, the frontier unreached people groups here in Germany. And then you have people who are belonging to people groups who are not really Christians. They're called unreached, but there's something going on. So that's my presentation for now. I could go on for more time, but maybe that could be done in another time. Let's uh, have a Q&A. And uh, thank you so much for listening. Um, may God bless you. And uh, thank you so much. Any questions? Uh, hello. Hello. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Schulze. Thank you very much for your presentation about the mission situation in Germany. But uh, you also told about uh, Germany has also reverse mission or the people are open for reverse mission, I think. But you didn't say much about that. That's mm -hmm. one of my wise comment. Yeah. Uh, Other than that, I think uh, your person was very, very quick and uh, just a little bit difficult to follow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, about reverse mission, uh, there had been an article, it was called uh, Migrant Churches, um, the places for reverse mission, or are there more migrant sanctuaries? So are uh, reaching migrant churches, the European uh, communities they're living in, like in Great Britain or in all kinds of countries in Europe or here in Germany. And my observation, my studies tell me right now, there are still more migrant sanctuaries, that people who are coming from with a migration background to Europe, they gather in those churches, but they're not very successful in reaching uh, the German communities. But that can change. And I'm sure that your convention could be a, a step toward uh, reaching uh, more Germans in Germany. Um, but reverse mission is, is more like, uh, in my perspective, a nice idea. It's a hopeful idea, but it's not reality yet. So that's my perspective. You might have a different view, but... Um, thank you, Dr. Schulz, uh, for sharing God's word. I have a question of um, what do you think is the most difficult part or um, concept to reach out people in Germany? Because we founded this church a few years ago. So only last year onwards, we have started the English service which will be in future also translated into German. So our dream will be like having a German worship of its own. Mm -hmm. What would, as the theologian or teacher of theology, as a German indeed, uh, what would you say as the most difficult element mm -hmm. to it in German? Yeah, I, I, I would see like that's summarized in three uh, challenges first. Germans feel they are Christians 
so they don't see any need to be reached by others. So the church is always the center of a city, like the Cologne Cathedral or in, in Bonn, the, the main church. So if there come other groups, especially free churches, uh, Germans tend to be suspicious. Um, so they don't want to be part of, uh, of a group that is not real for, in their perspective of church. But they also don't want to be very involved in their own church. They are members because they were baptized as a, as a child and so on. So that's a difficult situation. The other challenge is uh, religions. Uh, religion tend to be private in, in Germany. So it takes a time to have a religious conversation with Germans. They don't want to speak about their religion on the street. So if you would do street evangelism, they, are, they, they would probably hesitate to talk with you about their religion. That means um, friendship evangelism is, is one of the ways to connect with Germans, to meet with them and to see if they're open up, if they are willing, because religion is private. And if you would go to a Muslim country, for example, religion is public. So you can talk with strangers about religion on the street, but that's not possible in Germany. And, um, and uh, the third thing I would see as, as a challenge is, is a frustration uh, because we don't know why, but over the last 70 years, there have been so many different uh, strategies and methods. People came, I heard from one uh, mega church leader who did invest a lot in Germany with conferences. In a way, he said that we are too stupid uh, to apply his methods to have su success. But I don't think it's a, it's a matter of uh, strategies. Uh, it's more like it's not really happening. So we, we certainly need prayer. Uh, we need to ask God to move in, in Germany again. And I see you have a commitment to reach Germans, uh, to reach Germany and other people. So, and that begins all with prayer. And I would like to adv advise you, if you know Germans, pray for them daily. So I pray every day for my neighbors and I hope that God might reach them. So that would be my uh, summary in three points. Thank you, Dr. Schulz. We, as a church, um, are praying almost every day for Germans and uh, even um, by naming them out. So mm -hmm. thank you. That actually leads nicely into my question. I'm a guest dialing in from Vienna, Austria. Oh, and I'm very glad to hear you. Thank you so much for your insights. I really appreciate it. Well, a question I might have would be uh, one light motif of your talk, the mm -hmm. initial remark on numbers and the piece on disciple vis-a-vis -vis saint mm -hmm. seems to question much of the logic at work in much of what happens in global missions. Mm -hmm. How do we make the change? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I think that is something which was first helpful in the 1970s. So it started with Ralph Winter and others. Billy Graham was part of it, uh, that the strategy has changed of reaching a country and reaching people groups. But with globalization and, and the travel, so the numbers are even becoming more frustrating than helpful. So year by year, the number of unreached people groups is increasing. And so this seems to be wrong. So I'm not sure if that is really true. So, and I've seen so many mission presentations in the past where they always uh, tell you the numbers. Look, we have 7,000 unreached people groups and so on. So it's all about numbers and uh, that's not really encouraging. So my students don't like it if they hear too many numbers. So therefore um, I would like to come back to first trust God that he's uh, doing his job in a, in a perfect way. So he's reaching out and we, we are not able to really count that and to see everything. And we should trust that he is using us, even if we might see not the results we hope to see, but we shouldn't be discouraged and especially not by numbers. So numbers should never encourage us, uh, discourage us. So that would be one of the main topics I would like to present today. Yeah. That's excellent. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks. I have one more question. It's okay. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, my name is uh, George Malel. I also studied in UTC. That's my first ah. degree I got from there. <laughs> and now working as a missionary actually in Germany now for the last right. 20 years. Mm -hmm. But when you say that, or when I say that Germany is a missions lad, a la missions mission country, do you mm -hmm. agree to that? Yes, I agree. Because it's um, under the surface, it's a mission land. So there had been a survey among European youth and uh, about various worldviews. And only one question was about religion. Mm -hmm. And the young people, uh, which are called like Generation uh, Z, um, so the between 18 to 28, the question was, can you be happy without a belief in God? And in most European countries, more than 80% of the young people said, we don't need God to be happy. Mm. So you have many church members, but people feel they don't need God in their daily life. And, and that is, that's a mission situation. So, and, and I would say uh, we have different forms to talk about that in, in conversations, but also in hope that God interacts and interferes and intervenes in people's life in a powerful way, that they realize, okay, there's God, and without God, I'm lost. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Nobody else? Uh, I'll jump right back in. Uh, could I piggyback on that and ask... Um, it sounds to me almost as if the message we have been sending out as a church, almost on a continental level, has been either misheard or unclear. Mm -hmm. um, if joy is seen to be such such a different item than God, mm -hmm. right? Is this is this have we just lowered the bar of expectations of you know the, the um, participation of the divine life and excellence? I mean, this goes back to. Greek philosophy, and mm -hmm. we have such a rich intellectual history, and mm -hmm. have we just dropped the ball and, and flattenized the gospel to such an extent that people don't get what God's on about, or, mm -hmm. or what's, what's the reason for that um, incredible failure, actually, in some ways? You know? Jerry, I agree with you. I would say that um, we have tried to adapt the idea of God to the people, to the changing situation, and since uh, rationalism is the main philosophy here in, in Europe, uh, people try to communicate their faith to people who um, like rational uh, philosophy. And so at the end, there's no place for God anymore because you can try to explain God away. So that's something that many had done. And so they feel, okay, where do I need God? Is there any place for God left? Dietrich Bonhoeffer was one of those who did something different. He said, we, should, we must not um, preach God about things that are not explainable, but we must preach God in all parts of life, even when we can explain things, but we should always relate what we experience with God. And that is an approach also by uh, Randy Newman. His book is called Conversational Evangelism, which I really like. Uh, he's uh, doing the same approach that with everything you do, you experience, you connect it with God. And you not only talk about God when you cannot explain things. And I think that that could be a, a shift in our preaching um, and could help to see how real God's presence is in our daily life. Amen. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. uh, I have one more question there. Huh? Uh, as you know, there are more than 3,000 international churches all over Germany, according to the AKD and mm -hmm. other sources, you know. But what would be the responsibility and the, the pos possibility of such international churches to make disciples of the German people or the German Christians? Mm -hmm. And another but, thing is also, I, I noticed that you did not say anything about the free churches that's already in Germany and their mm -hmm. impact on mission. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, the, the second question is Bartolome. He is a professor at uh, the Freie Theologische Hochschule in Gießen. He had written a habilitation about it to study the mission of the free churches. And he found out free churches are mostly reaching other Christians. Mm -hmm. So uh, most churches we see are places for people who are moving from one church to another church. Mm -hmm. And uh, to see true conversion, it's very rare. So I have a doctoral student, he's writing his dissertation about churches who are uh, people, uh, about, about churches who are reaching out to people who are non-Christians and who become Christians in their churches. And that's very hard to find because many churches grow because of, of um, Christian migration from one church to another church. And, and I would say that one uh, reason for that is that churches, uh, free churches have a tradition. Some of them are more than 100 years old. And so if, like myself, I'm a Baptist in the fourth generation, uh, I was born in a church, raised in a church, became a Christian in church, uh, but that is my subculture. And if you are in a subculture, it's very difficult to reach out to people who are in a different subculture or different milieu. So that's one of the challenges. Uh, churches who are being started by new Christians who came to faith, they are much more effective in mission because they have more context to other Christians. So therefore we have the idea of planting churches could be a very effective way of doing missions if you have a new church new people come to faith and that could result in, in church growth so that is one answer the other answer is and i i can only imagine what it means to be as a people person with migration background in germany that sometimes uh, people in germany might be friendly uh, and um open to, to people of migration background, but they still uh, have a, a wall between themselves and others. So for example, I was uh, speaking with a church visitor in one of the free churches here in, in the area, and she was a member of the Catholic church. And in the Catholic church, we see more and more people from the global south uh, as, uh, as priests for example, and she told me I cannot understand him because of his accent. So, and I think that could be an obstacle that people feel, okay, he's now coming to us from India, let's say, or from Africa, but that's not the church I knew when I was young. So they cannot, they feel that the church is not their home anymore. And I'm not sure what to do if the second generation migrants in Germany are more successful. That could be an, a possibility. I don't know. So how is your experience, uh, doctor? Uh, especially I see in the African international churches, more Germans are coming and participating in the worship and mm -hmm. studies. Okay. But, but their effort to disciple them is a different question, you know, mm -hmm. because I have seen very little or a very few churches mm -hmm. who take time to disciple mm -hmm. uh, the real Germans in that mm -hmm. context. No, yeah. that is my experience here. Mm -hmm. But I see that there's a great uh, role the immigrant churches can play. Definitely. Yeah. In, in the, the mission field in Germany. There's a church in Berlin, uh, which consists of migrants, and they're able to reach out to um, more marginalized Germans, so who are jobless or um, have problems to really um, find their way of living. And that could be a good home. Um, and then you have international churches who are reaching international professionals. That's another way. So I think it's always to look at your neighborhood, uh, what kind of people are living in your neighborhood and how can you um, serve them. And I would say there's a one a Russian migrant church here in Bonn and they realize that their mission could be to provide a home for other migrants. 
And, and I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Maybe just to weigh in briefly on the street evangelism piece. I don't have much experience in, in Germany, but here in Austria, I go about once a week or so just to tree preach and flyer and have conversation. Mm -hmm. And actually, you're absolutely, even here, I don't know, I guess in some ways there's some overlap. Um, many Austrians will not necessarily stop and have conversation about mm -hmm. the gospel or their faith commitments, mm -hmm. you know, two minutes into a conversation. That just won't happen. Mm -hmm. However, they will talk to you about successes and failures in their everyday. And if you can build trust mm -hmm. on the topics on the periphery, uh, within 15 minutes, they might very much be open to receiving your email address. And mm -hmm. every second, third person does send you an email. And yeah. there is follow-up. You know, you talk about soccer and you talk about or football. Mm -hmm. right? and, and, and so I, I do, th this from my experience, there's, there's more hope for mm -hmm. street evangelism than what one might think. Yes. And uh, because we go out, the team goes out four or five times a week mm -hmm. and we are over 60 people covering mm -hmm. probably 20 or 30 nations mm -hmm. uh, there and, and Vienna is so international, a third of the city is international. It mm -hmm. really does resonate. And many people do have conversations. So I, I think, I guess bond is also quite international and there mm -hmm. might be opportunity for that as well, yeah. but it's hard work. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. But right. To connect with people, invite them. Hospitality is, is a great tool. Uh, in Bonn, for example, the second most frequent spoken language in Bonn is not English. It's not Turkish. It's Arabic. So that's our situation here. Yeah. Yeah. I, I will. If if you're interested, please contact uh, Brother Isaac. Uh, I will send him the PDF, and there's much more information on the PDF. I have 80 slides with many links uh, for further um, research, and um, that could be helpful. And. I would like to thank you again for inviting me today. I enjoyed also your the questions, the conversation with you and whatever you're doing, wherever you are involved in what kind of ministry, uh, please do not be discouraged. Uh, you serve the only God that exists. There's only one God that is the God of the Bible. That's our belief, uh, the God, the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. And we celebrate the work of the Holy Spirit this weekend, Pentecost and um, and power is uh, the, uh, the theme in the book of Acts. With the power of the Holy Spirit, people became Christians. And that's something we can pray for and for our own life and for our ministry and for your church. Thank you so much and God bless you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Dr. Schultz, uh, for sharing this wonderful insight. I personally uh, am really... I got a lot of insight uh, from you today. <laughs> so I hope all the people joined have a different perspective to look at missions and to look at missions in Germany. And we might think it's difficult, but as Dr. Schulz told, there's nothing impossible for God. And our life should be a testimony and our life should reflect Jesus so that we don't have to preach peop to people, but they would see our lives and they would come to us asking, how are you living such a nice life and how is God working in your life? And then that would be a reason for them to open up and to sh we can share the love of Christ in their lives. Thank you, Dr. Schultz, for sharing this wonderful message today. We're really honored to have you in our sessions. Uh, and before we close, I know we are uh, ahead of time, but before we close, I would request Pastor Ratish to come forward and uh, pray and close this service. After that, Pastor Isaac uh, would uh, give the benediction. Shall we pray? Dear Lord, we thank you and praise you for this wonderful time. Thank you, Lord, for a challenge, mission challenge that we could hear in this morning, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the life of uh, Shoes. Thank you for uh, what you are doing through him. And thank God for the mission that is happening uh, in Germany. Lord, we also could hear about the, the challenges of mission in Germany 
and uh, the responsibility that we have to take this challenge to reach the people who are unreached at the same time people who are in a uh, migrated and migrant background and also people who are uh, rejecting or the hardening their heart towards the gospel and we also could hear about the the challenge that Christ has given to the disciples go and preach the gospel and baptize them in the name of the father and son and the holy spirit yes lord we uh, need to go and to preach this gospel and it is a great responsibility that you have given us a lot and thank you lord for reminding us our responsibility and help us uh, to take this responsibility and to be involved in mission to reaching out the people a lot yes lord we understand it is the responsibility uh, responsibility of the church to take uh, this good news to the people and we know the time and the epoch that we are in and it is uh, a great challenge that we have to face but we know uh, we know that you are with us and your presence uh, presence is with us in every times and every moments of our life to uh, to do uh, great things and great ministry for your kingdom a lord lord we need uh, your grace and your power to uh, uh, to save or to uh, to pull the people from the the bondage of sin lord we uh, need your grace and and we also could hear the challenge that the prayer is very important to reach out the people a lot and help us to take this challenge and to pray continuously without ceasing and without without stopping for this uh, without stopping and let help us to cry out to the lord to uh, to regain many people to Christ a lot yes lord we need your grace and we need your power a lot and bless us together and i pray for the uh, the people who heard the gospel and who heard the god's word and the mission challenge we pray that your presence and your grace to be with them and uh, give them a stir up a stir up their heart and rededicate us a lot um, uh, help us to rededicate our commitment towards you lord lord we submit entire session into your hand thank you lord for giving us a wonderful time in jesus name we pray amen so i have few announcements i want to thank um, everyone who have joined um, this meeting today and making a blessing and especially to dr shulls um, and uh, reverend um, dr george melen my friend and uh, reverend uh, pastor david from dusseldorf also very close friend of mine and thank you all i just want to um, i don't want to uh, name everyone out so uh, thank you all and um, we have in the evening today evening at six o'clock german time we also have the uh, mission evening it's a it's a convention it's a spiritual renewal meeting and pastor waldemar would be uh, sharing from god's word so i request everyone to kindly come and join us this um, live stream and um, sunday tomorrow morning at 10:30 we have a general worship service so indian time today um, indian time 9:30 pm god bless you all and looking forward to hear you and see you soon blessings amen